this is a Roll to Hit Gaming first look. In this video, we begin our game showcase. The first look covers components, rules, and setup. It is designed to give you a quick introduction to a game you might have interest in. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Let's head into the game room for your Roll to Hit Gaming first look host. Welcome back. I'm Lucas from Roll to Hit Gaming, and today we'll take our first look at Buranauts from publisher Fox and Ox Creations. In Buranauts, players take on the role of galactic interns, dreaming of climbing the corporate ladder and working to gain influence with the various department heads with one goal in mind, to become the CEO of the most bureaucratic corporation in the galaxy. If you've ever wondered what would happen if Galaxy Quest met the office, you'll want to hang around as we get to the table and take our first look at Buranauts. Once you've filed the proper paperwork and are permitted to open the box, you'll find 60 space and 20 solar system cards, 18 border cards numbered 1 through 10 and A through H, and a single directions card, 108 influence cards, 18 in each player color, space dock, department head, and paperwork boards, 20 jelly tokens and 40 jelly activity cards, 42 almighty photon tokens, 12 black cubes, 6 schedule meeting tokens, one for each player, 12 spaceship tokens, two for each player, 35 career goal cards, 23 replacement space and nine replacement system cards, six space phone dials and six player boards, one for each player, and finally the rule book. First, we'll set up the borders for our space grid. Place the directions card on the table in the spot that will become the top left position. Then place the number cards one through 10 to the right of the directions card forming a top row. Next, place the letter cards, A through H, in a column beneath the directions card as shown. Shuffle the 60 space and 20 solar system cards together and randomly place them face down in a grid, eight rows by 10 columns, in the 80 spaces formed by the border you've created. Place the paperwork, space dock, and department head boards and a supply of jelly and photon tokens near the space grid. Shuffle the jelly cards and place them near the space grid, forming a draw pile and also place the replacement space and solar system cards near the play area. Each player takes a player board, a space phone dial, two spaceship tokens, a schedule meeting token, and 18 influence cards of their chosen color. Place a black cube on the zero space of the jelly track and another on the two space of the budget track on your player board. Shuffle the career goals deck and deal five to each player who should look at them and arrange them in the order of their choice then place them beneath each of the ranked positions on the bottom of their player board. Draw five more career goals and place them near the space grid forming the career goal pool. Each player should now place their spaceship on its level one side on the space dock board in the ready for deployment section. Finally, select a start player. The rules state that this should be the person who most recently got a raise or promotion, but if that doesn't work for you, simply randomly determine the start player. You're now ready to begin playing Buranauts. In Buranauts, you'll play through a series of rounds, known as Fiscal Periods, until a player has completed all five of their career goals. Each Fiscal Period has four phases. In this phase, jellies move and then spawn. Begin by drawing and revealing a jelly card. First, all jellies on the space grid will move one card in the direction shown on the drawn jelly card. In this example, all jellies will move left. If a jelly moves off the grid, it is returned to the supply. If a jelly spawns on or moves onto a solar system card, they grow more powerful. Add an additional jelly token to that card. Next, based on the number of players, jellies will spawn on the space grid. We've set up our game for four players, meaning that jellies will spawn on each of the two-player, three-player, and four-player lines as seen here. If multiple jellies are on the same card, stack those tokens these jellies combine into a more powerful form. In this phase, players gain almighty photons equal to the amount shown on their budget tracks. Players start the game with a budget of two, which will increase as the game proceeds. Almighty photons are the currency in Buranauts. In this phase, each player, in player order, must decide whether they will file paperwork or pass. Due to corporate bureaucracy, in order to move, attack, or take actions, players must file the necessary paperwork. Players who choose to pass are out for the remainder of this phase. If you decide to file paperwork, place one almighty photon token on the file paperwork board. You didn't think processing that paperwork would be free, did you? 
Use your space dial to indicate where on the space grid you would like to move. For example, entering H on the left dial and 10 on the right will allow you to move your ship to the lower right space card. If you would rather take an action, enter the star icon on each side of your space phone dial. Once all players have decided they should simultaneously reveal their space phone dials, then in player order, each player will resolve the next four steps. If you entered two stars into your space phone dial, you can perform one of the following actions. To upgrade your ship, simply pay all mighty photons equal to the new level of your spaceship. For example, if your ship is currently level 2, pay three almighty photons back to the supply and replace your spaceship token with the level 3 side of your other spaceship token. When you choose the reassign career goal action, replace one career goal from your career plan with a face-up career goal from the career goal pool. Note that you cannot change the order of your goals using this action. When you choose the adjust career goals action, simply reorder your goals in your career path in any order you choose. Players can complete an under budget career goal by spending the indicated number of almighty photons. If your spaceship token is on the needs repair section of the space dock board, simply move your token to the ready for deployment section. When a player chooses to have a business lunch, they may place one of their influence cards face down to any department pile on the department heads board. Once you perform the business lunch action, you cannot file paperwork for the remainder of this fiscal period. You may attack an enemy on the same card as your spaceship. An enemy is a solar jelly token, a jelly swarm card, pirate outpost card, or a space pirate card. To defeat an enemy, your spaceship must be of higher level than the enemy. For example, our level 2 ship is on the same space as a solar jelly token. We attack and defeat the solar jelly because it is only level 1. A solar jelly's level is equal to the number of jelly tokens on that space. If your spaceship level is equal to or lower than your enemy, you can spend almighty photons to increase your spaceship's level by 1 for the current attack for each token spent. For example, we've landed on a space with a pirate outpost, which is level 3. Our ship is also level 3, so we spend one almighty photon to temporarily increase our attack to level 4, defeating the pirate outpost. If you defeat an enemy represented by a card, i.e. space pirates or a jelly swarm, remove that card from the grid and replace it with the appropriate replacement card, space for space and solar system for solar system cards. If you defeat a jelly, remove all jelly tokens from that space and increase the jelly track on your player board by the number of jellies defeated. If you defeat a jelly swarm card, increase your jelly track by three spaces. Defeating jellies may help complete career goals, but we'll cover that in a bit. If you entered a set of coordinates into your space phone dial, flip the space card at that location and place your spaceship on that card, then resolve the effects of that card. Flipped cards remain face up for the entire game. There are four types of space and solar system cards that provide bonus photons. If you flipped one of these cards, you receive the indicated number of photons as a one-time bonus. If you find an open space card or an empty system card, you didn't find anything, but the corporation thanks you for your dedication. Now get back to work. If you uncover a relic card, take the card from the space grid and set it near your play area. If you flipped a ship upgrade, simply upgrade your spaceship token to the next level. Remember that your ship cannot be upgraded beyond level 4. If you reveal an enemy card, you can attempt to attack and destroy it during an attack step. If your destination card is occupied by another player, or if another player also wishes to move their spaceship to the same card, schedule a meeting to determine priority. Step 4 is identical to Step 2. You may attack in both Step 2 and Step 4. After resolving Step 4, players repeat Phase 3 until each player passes. During this phase, players will clean up the play area, preparing it for the next turn, and enemies will attack if possible. First, return any almighty photon tokens from the paperwork board to the supply. Then, if any player's spaceship is on a card with an enemy, their spaceship becomes damaged and is moved to the needs repair section of the space dock board. The goal of Buranauts is to complete your career goals faster than the other players, so let's cover how career goals are completed. Once you've satisfied the requirements for completing a career goal, you must immediately complete that goal. To do this, flip the card face up and show that you have completed it. In this case, 
we needed to collect two relics in order to complete the Relic Hunter career goal. Through exploration, we've done so, thereby completing this goal. Then collect your reward. Each career goal allows you to place two of your influence cards into piles on the department headboard. Each goal will specify where one of these cards must be placed. For our Relic Hunters example, the first is placed in the exploration pile, and we may place the second in the pile of our choice. Placing these influence cards gains you the favor of that department head. The more cards you have in a given stack, the greater the chance that department head votes for you to become CEO at game end. Career goals must be completed in order from left to right, representing your advance through the ranks of the corporation. This means that if you've met the requirements for the third career goal, but not the first, you cannot complete it until you first complete the first and second career goals. If you're the first player to complete a career goal of a given rank, for example, becoming the first player to complete the career goal under the Buranaut space, you may place an additional card into the department pile of your choice on the department head's board. Also, each player will increase their budget track by one. If multiple players complete a career goal of a new rank during the same paperwork step, resolve priority by scheduling a meeting. Each career goal has specific conditions that must be met in order to complete them. For the Space Jelly career goal, a player must increase their jelly track to level 5. Any further Space Jelly career goals require the player to increase their Space Jelly track by two more spaces, 7, 9, 11, and so on. Law and Order career goals require the player to defeat a Space Pirate or a Pirate Outpost. To complete further Law and Order career goals, the player must defeat an additional Space Pirate or Pirate Outpost. The first time a player completes a Spaceship career goal, they must have upgraded their ship to level 3. The next spaceship career goal requires the player to upgrade their ship to level 4. Each player can complete a maximum of two spaceship career goals per game. To complete the Relic Hunter career goal, a player must collect two Relic cards. All further times, the player must collect an additional Relic card. Players may take an action to complete an under-budget career goal. When they do so, they must pay three almighty photons to complete the goal. Further, under-budget career goals only require two almighty photons be spent. When multiple players choose to reassign career goals, wish to occupy the same space or solar system card, or complete career goals of a new rank during the same paperwork step, those players will need to schedule a meeting in order to determine priority. Scheduling a meeting works just like rock, paper, scissors. Players will secretly place their meeting token on one of the available spaces and reveal simultaneously. Happy Hour beats Golf, Golf beats Poker Game, and Poker Game beats Happy Hour. The winner will gain priority and act first when reassigning or completing career goals, or will gain the right to occupy the conflicting space, and the loser will have to choose any free space without a jelly token on it, flipping that card and resolving its effects. Once a player completes the career goal under the director space of their career path, that triggers the end of the game, and the vote to declare a new CEO and winner of the game will occur at the end of this fiscal period. The player who triggers game end cannot file paperwork for the remainder of this final fiscal period. Shuffle the stack of influence cards for each department and then draw one card from each pile. To win the vote and the game, you must get a hard majority of votes from the directors or win two rounds with soft majorities. In this example, no player has a hard majority, which would be three or more of their cards showing. Blue has two, and no other player has two, so blue wins a soft majority, but has not yet won the game, as one hard or two soft majorities are required for victory. Remove these influence cards from the game and draw another from each stack to hold a new round of voting. Yellow now has three votes, equaling a hard majority and giving the yellow player the victory. I hope you've enjoyed this Roll to Hit Gaming first look at Buranauts from publisher Fox and Ox Creations. Obviously, we couldn't cover every rule in this video, but I hope this gives you enough information to help you get started playing or decide if this might be a game that might interest you. Until next time, I'm Lucas from Roll to Hit Gaming, and never give up, never surrender. Thank you for joining Roll to Hit Gaming for another first look, where we go inside the box, through the rules, and onto the table. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, 
please click the like and subscribe button. Find us on Facebook and Twitter and join us in the conversation in the comments below.